Welcome. This is an essay on drug use and abuse and recovery. A lot of times in the programs that you go to, they'll tell you, all you have to look forward to is jails, institutions, and death. But they don't mention recovery. It's almost like they're trying to keep you from thinking that way and having the meditation like, yes, I can beat this. It wasn't part of my life before until I accepted it and embraced it and it became me and I became it. I can beat this. So recovery is a crucial part to quitting doing drugs. But relapse is part of recovery. You have to accept that. But don't embrace that like, hey, I have an out. I can relapse at least once. And everybody will go, well, let's go out of recovery. Don't be, don't be like that for, for yourself. But just know that recovery is very hard to do. And you're not recovered until you die. You're always going to be an addict. But you're not using. So you could have the meditation. Well, what's the point? I'm always going to be an addict. I'm going to snort pills all day. Grow up. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I recorded something here. Give it a listen if you like. If not, have a good day. This is a discussion about addiction. A lot of people are addicted to drugs, but it might not be as deep as that. Maybe the person just forgot who they were. I'm speaking from experience. You forget who you are. You have now become your own need to quell what's called an addiction is really just behavioral issues. Again, on the subject of drug abuse and bad behaviors is what that's all about. Drug abuse and drug addiction is all about behavioral issues, clearly. That person's behavior led them to do that. Whatever reason, stroke their ego, satisfy something that they're not getting in life, some kind of response, tactile, whatever it is. They're missing something, that's why they're trying to fill it with that, clearly. They like doing it, and then they like doing it too much, and then they can't stop doing it. But they can stop doing it because it's all behaviors. So, in theory, a person who is clean is behaving. You've decided to favor your own gratification over common sense, which tells you you're ruining your life. You're ruining the lives of people around you, possibly. And if nothing else, in spirit, you're crushing theirs because they're seeing you fail and fall on your face high as, as you can be. And they're like, wow, that's not the, one, that's not the guy that I knew before. And he, he stole stuff? Wow. Why would he do that? Oh, well, the drugs. Well, yeah, you know what? It was me. If I stole stuff, it was me. If somebody else stole stuff, it was them. It wasn't the drugs. Yes, the drugs changed their whole mentation about common sense and morals and ideals and ethics. But you're in a whole different world. You have become your own addiction. You care more about your addiction than going to your child's recital and you're snorting coke in your car before you go in. And then you're like, oh man, I gotta get out of here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, because you want to snort more coke. Or you shoot heroin in front of somebody's house and you OD. And then it's on them and they're like, wow, that poor person OD'd in front of my house. That's your behavior. You can stop doing that. You can stop doing heroin. You can stop doing coke. Don't do pills. Pills are dirty. What is wrong with you? You have been brainwashed into thinking, oh, I'll do pills, that's not as bad as heroin. You, you, you're not seeing the whole picture, because you too, your ego is being assuaged right now by your own lack of intellect in that department right there, because you would see that drugs are not good to begin with, but pills are meant to be mass-produced, dirty, dirty pills, and a lot of people snort them. And you know what? Way to go. But, because it's going right to your mucous membranes, okay? But any drug that you use would be quicker going through your mucous membranes, right? Or directly into your bloodstream. So this is the whole point. People have removed their common sense in this equation to go and do stuff that is going into your bloodstream and affecting you for the rest of your life over some quick thrills. Drugs are not for everybody. There was a kid. One of my good friends, I knew him since he was a little kid. I can't mention his name, I can't talk about him too much because everybody will instantly know who it is. But the things that I'm talking about could really ruin his reputation and what his family and friends thought about him, so I'm not going to name any details. But he was in very good shape. He was 
very into martial arts. He was incredibly healthy, but decided to do coke and do a lot of it. And he had a heart attack. He died. Well, again, I can't give an exact age because everybody will instantly know who I'm talking about. I'm not trying to insult anybody else, but he died too early. And it's only because, again, I'm trying to edit my thoughts because any information that I give, somebody will know who it was. But he had a heart attack, and uh, it was only because he had done damage to his heart or his heart was already too weak to deal with all the coke he was doing. So he made good money and did good coke, and it killed him at too young of an age. And that's really sad. And that's the only reason he did that was because of his decisions. So drugs are not for everybody. And nobody should really do them, but reverse psychology says you don't know what they are until you've experienced them. So the ones of us who have lived through it can definitely attest to the fact that we've already done all the legwork. You don't really need to ask anybody and they'll tell you, although every experience is different, they are all the same. Drugs fucked up their lives in one way or another. People that didn't have their lives messed up, good, good for you. But that's a big yet. Right there, a Y-E-T, yet, they call that, because that's something that still could happen to you, so you have to be very careful, but the kid that I was talking about had a very bright future, um, I can't give too many details, but he was very talented in many ways, and it's really a shame that he died so young just because of his decisions, and not for nothing, the people around him who encouraged that are just as guilty. I can say that about myself, I've done that, I've done that with people that I did drugs with, I... I help them to get high the same as they help me to get high. So we're just as guilty on either side. Someone that does those, that includes other people in their partying and all that stuff, you're creating a victim in one way or the other. So you're enabling that. So the point is, who enabled him to do what he did to die at such a young age and to waste all that talent and good health and very, very good sound philosophies that he was into when he died so young. So, not everybody should do drugs. If you've lost anybody to an addiction, you can attest to this. It's You can't get it back. That's There's no way to ever get that back. That's gone. That's gone. And other people have died. And the results of those deaths are people without mothers because of your decisions. So, the point is, your decisions can ruin what is considered your world so you have to be careful and stop doing drugs because you're not even including yourself in the rest of the world in this equation drugs are your world therefore you're living in a world within a world which you have no control over either one and you've decided to spin out of control in both that, that's not a good idea my friend and if you are using heroin be aware never Use somebody else's works. Get your own. If you're going to use, be responsible about it. Get your own. There are clean needle exchange programs everywhere. Use clean works. That's the point. And then stop. You can just stop on your own. Anybody can if you really want to. But you have to want it. Otherwise, you're wasting time. There was a girl. I went to the faction house in Quincy, Massachusetts. And I was trying to just shut everybody up. So I went for the weekend. There's a girl I know that couldn't get a bed. And she died over that weekend. So, possibly my taking up her time could have been a thing, but in reality, both of us needed the help. I went there to dupe everybody that I was getting the help. She actually needed it, and I took her a space. That's my point. So, don't have that on your conscience, okay? Please. It's, you don't want that. And you don't want other things on your conscience either, so... Your conscience is telling you at the back of your head, stop doing drugs, stop doing drugs. But the front of you, which is the lifestyle, which is the whole craving to begin with, that's the lifestyle you're into. It's not the drug. You don't care about the drug anymore. <laughs> you're so numb, you don't even know what's going on. So you have to wake up. you got to stop using. And if you're going to still use, use less until you don't have to use anymore. Wean yourself or just quit. Oh, well, I'm going to be sick. What are you, a pussy? You can get water out of a puddle from a railroad track and shoot it into your arm. But you can't just stop doing dope. Yes, you can. So you have to try. Right? So 
clean works and then quit. And you're affecting everybody that you love. Maybe you forgot about them because you fell in love with Molly or whatever the latest thing is. So stop doing all that shit. It's all fake. It's not good for you. It's destroying you and the rest of the world. And for people that do real drugs, because Molly's not a real drug. <laughs> wow. What is wrong with people? You might as well snort uh, Pez. Okay, there you go, you Pez head. I see you falling down in front of a friggin' store, you idiot. Go do real drugs if you're going to do them. But don't do them. Get off heroin, get off coke, get off fentanyl. Wow, people. Stop doing drugs. But if you're going to and you use needles, use clean works. There's needle exchange programs everywhere. That benefits you and it benefits society. And then at least by that degree, you're not dragging it down with you. I speak from experience. It's been uh, over 20 years that I haven't used a needle. I haven't done heroin. I've done pills here and there because I have a bad back and I convince myself that it's okay. And it is okay because I'm not an addict anymore. But I also will be one for the rest of my life. So there is that to contend with every single second of every single day. So don't be on that side. Be on the side that defeats it and walks away like, wow, I was bigger and better than that. I'm never going back to it. That's the whole point. Anybody can quit. It's hard to stay quit. So good luck. That's the point right there. Anybody can quit anything they want to quit if they want to. Oh, um, I smoke cigarettes. Why? They taste like crap. Why would you even want to smoke those? I smoked for a long time just because, whatever reason. One of my friends, just like his brother before him, just had half his lung removed from... Could have been smoking. He worked in factories as a mechanic, all that too, but whatever it was took half his lung. And I would say it's because of his own behavior, he's smoking constantly. But, no pun intended, that's people's addiction. That's an addiction. Why? Tactile response? Um... Not to put a sexual turn on it, but some kind of oral fixation. You know what I mean? People that smoke are sucking on something all the time. <laughs> Pipes. And now people are vaping? Wow, people. Dope slap. Wake up. What? How bad do you need something in your mouth, okay? Did you not have your mom's teeth in there, or what happened right there? Wow. And people are very impressionable. So your friends are all duping themselves, and you're allowing that. You're enabling your friends to defeat their own common sense. And that mentation has now taken over the whole world because nobody's paying attention. Everybody's doing all this stuff to harm themselves and the people around them. But at least they saw a cool video on TikTok. Another quick, very important point about addiction. I talk about getting clean needles, go to the needle exchange program. But there's a, another device which is even more insidious than needles, and that is straws. Coke straws, you cut your little straws and you throw them out your window when you're driving, you idiot. A little kid's going to see that and go, oh, what's that? But straws are dirty, and if you share straws, that's the same as sharing a needle. But most junkies are smart enough to never share their works. Straws get shared all the time. So you might think, oh, well, it's not that bad. I, I still had a pill with my friend and I used their straw. <sighs> wow. You totally let your guard down right there because you didn't even think about something in a, a rational, from a rational point of view because you didn't think you had to. Okay, well, you do. Straws are... Horrible. Never use somebody's straw. Don't do it to begin with, but if you do that, never use your buddy's straw. That's You're passing all sorts of stuff back and forth. This is how people get hepatitis C. You think, oh, well, it's just from needles. Well, you know what? A lot of people share straws, so that's another point to contend with. Don't do it. And remember, there's no vaccine for hepatitis C. Maybe some people don't realize this, but it's a virus. If you decide to make these choices in your life over quick gratification, which is really duping you into believing that that's the salve for your soul, that's you're duping yourself. If you do these things, you could walk away with long-term effects like hepatitis, hepatitis B, 
is at least somewhat temporary. You get some jaundice, but hepatitis C is most likely the rest of your life. I passed hepatitis C and B on my own. B probably would have gone away on its own. I, I never took interferon or anything like that. Um, as an aside, my first wife, Genevieve, died and half of my levels went down because I was obviously being exposed to it from her as well. But um, don't do this stuff. Don't share needles and don't share straws. You wouldn't go share a fork with somebody. I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm just a germaphobe, but use your common sense and stop doing drugs and get back to life. The world needs you. On the topic of addiction and having it around you all the time but still not caving to it, as far as each heroin goes, for myself it's been 22 years just about since I've used a needle or heroin. And it's everywhere. It is everywhere. You could go out your door and wave to somebody and get some. This is proof. I got Thank it from you. outside right by the mailbox. It's the cap to a needle. That's not for insulin. That's for heroin. And that was outside. So this is the cap. Where's the needle? Right? Who left the cap there but not, but, right? So here we go. It's everywhere. So you can cave to it or you cannot cave to it. I haven't yet and I don't plan on it. Remember something. People will tell you when you go to get treatment, people will tell you this is a disease. Your addiction is a disease. That is incorrect. Addiction is a choice. It's your decisions. You could snort a line of coke or you could not buy any to begin with and stay away from it and save your money and do something good with it for somebody else or yourself as a treat. But it's the thinking, it's behavior. Drugs are all behavioral. Anybody can unlearn any learned behavior. Drug addiction is a learned behavior. You learned that. <laughs> it's like something like, um, let's just say something like masturbation. A person knows that it's gonna achieve an outcome that's favorable, <laughs> pun intended. So they do that a lot because they want to have that favorable outcome. So there you go. Addiction is just behavioral patterns repeating themselves, which you could easily just not do. Remember that. Because that's how they're going to get you to take meds. They're going to say, it's a disease. Oh, take this medication. It will help you. And you have to say to them, I'm trying to get off a habit. So now you're trying to introduce me to a habit, which is really just maintenance. So I can be on some kind of schedule to dupe my body and my mind into thinking that it's helping. But actually, medications most of the time are given for their side effects. You can look at that. It's public information. And I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I can tell you, this is true. A lot of the people that would try to steer you off of addiction are trying to give you meds because of their side effects and what they do for you. So do you want to do that? And do you want to have a schedule where you have to still take things on a schedule just like a habit? Just like setting up a spoon and a needle or just snorting it right out of the bag having a face full of whatever it is you just bought. You could do that, or you could just not do it at all. You could just quit on your own. My stepfather, Billy, said to me, why don't you just quit when I was doing heroin? And I was deeply into it. Others have been deeper into it. So I know people that have, I know a kid that did 100 bags a day. So you're not going to tell me anything I don't know. But my addiction wasn't quite that bad. So, But I got away from it more than once, twice, actually. Then I hurt my back and I went back to it. I could have not gone back to it, but that's a different story. But the main point is you can do anything you want to do. So then when you are told, oh, addiction is a disease, that's incorrect. You can't think about it like that. Cancer is a disease. You don't wake up one day and go, I think I'm going to go talk to that shady guy over there and see if I can buy two ounces of cancer. <laughs> Remember that. And remember this, things like methadone and suboxone are a joke. Don't take those. You don't need those. That's basically a way to keep you in the system, in my opinion. You don't need either one of those. And suboxone is a blocker, supposedly, so you wouldn't see a seasoned addict have suboxone and any kind of opiates in their system. That would be foolish for them to do that because they would not get the draw, so to speak. So that's the point of suboxone, but people can sell suboxone and then go buy heroin, right? Don't do it. Don't take Suboxone or Methadone. If you want to quit, just quit on your own. You can do that. Anybody can quit anything at any time if they're ready to. If they're not ready to, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of resources. And it, you're letting people down because you're lying to them. Don't lie to them. When you're ready to quit, quit. And remember what you're doing to your family because you're not ready to stop behaving that way. Someday, you could die. 
I've lost people to addiction. Many people have lost people to addiction. It's one of the stupidest ways to die. Somebody could have just not done that. And I know a lot of people that have done that. So don't be one of those casualties and just stop. You can do it. Good luck.